welcome everybody to another Strange Objects video tutorial. My name is David Samuel Drayton and I'm happy to have you on my show. Today I want to walk you through some of my scenes I've posted on social media, especially the ones I've posted on Instagram under my account Stranger Objects 68. Um, like two years ago I started to every day is just to increase my skill set a little further and I came across um, Corona Renderer and I immediately fall, fell in love because it's really, really fast. Um, it's, it's, there's barely any setup time and the materials in the lighting situations are just awesome. Um, I want to uh, tell you how I've done these mashup, mashup meshes, so to speak, uh, between humanoids and a, uh, I think it's a tiger or a leopard or it's a, it's a cat. It's a big cat. If you take a closer look at this, at this piece, uh, you can see that there is the leopard or jaguar or whatever head um, mashed into the uh, the body of our statue. And you can see the seam maybe from the sides, but you can't see it from the front. So that's, I think it's pretty cool. Um, the other thing I, uh, I want to tell you is where you can download those. And if you go to 3dscans.com you will see it somewhere in the video somewhere i'm going to put it up here or find the link in the description you can download all kinds of different 3d scans here they're all kinds of styles and um, if we look down here we may find the one i've used for that piece they're loading where is it i think that's him right here so if you take a look yeah i think it's him Oh, no, he got different pants. Uh, where's the guy with the pants? Oh, he's right here. You can download, of course, this one as well. And you see other artists have used the mesh as well. And they're posted on Instagram. They give some credits. And then um, the wonderful website of 3D Scans will post them here as a example. But today I want to use one of the newer ones I came across. And this is these dogs. I think they're pretty cool. Uh, they have a lot of details in there. Um, they have tons of polygons <clears throat> and all you need to do is just download them. There's no questions asked. You just download it, unzip, and then you dive right into Cinema 4D. And here you can open the file itself. You just go to open projects. Mine is in the downloads folder. I say open and then Cinema 4D prompts you with an OBJ import. Um, I know that the file is really small. A lot of OBJs are small. I don't know why. Maybe there is a reason. Um, I can't tell you why, but it doesn't matter. Um, I just scale it up to 100 and click OK. Um, as the object has a lot of polygons, it may take a while. And there are some steps we need to uh, uh, be aware of before we start moving the object around. Um, if you import something like an OBJ into your Cinema 4D file, Cinema will automatically frame the object in the center. Um, sometimes this is good, sometimes this is bad. Especially it's bad if you don't know what this actual scale is. And for reference, I always put in a default cube and to get some confirmation. And I think it's pretty happy. Um, you may say, yeah, but the statue may be bigger or smaller. Okay, you can come in here in 3D scans and have a look at the height so it's 60 centimeters uh, you can scale it in cinema 4d if you want but for our purposes i want to show you something special um we just want to keep it at the size it is it's something about i think it should be one 150 right now or so 150 meters 150 centimeters or so just type out oh, oh it's even bigger it's 250 or even bigger wow it's a three meter statue right there yeah something around this 350 anyhow so the uh, the file just came in and you can see that my computer is thinking a lot because it's a, a very polygon heavy scene and there is uh, it's rotated. So what we next we want to do, we want to rotate it back. There we go. And we got the axes. We're going to rotate it up. We're going to hold down shift to keep the constraint rotation on. We're going to constrain it to five degrees per turn. Here we go. Now we have zero and now if you want to reset your axes you just come in here or type l as a shortcut and you can reset the axes we take a while again 
because the mesh is pretty heavy. Here we go. And uh, let me see what else we need to do. Oh, the y-axis is already up. Um, we want to put the axis somewhere, somewhere here. Uh, oh, you can see my computer is not the fastest. I'm on a Mac Pro, late 16, I guess, or late 15. Um, but that's totally fine. You don't need a beefy computer. You just have to be a little more patient. And as we all know, uh, constraints boost our creativity. I think that's fine for me. I just release the, uh, the enable access tool and I just come in here and type 000 and you can see that the mesh will jump into the position where we wanted to have it. Okay, as the scene file is still super strong, I want to reduce the amount of polygons. So if I come in here, just zoom in a little more, then you can see what I mean. And the navigation is slow. If I press NB, <clears throat> which say garage shutting in lines, you can see that the mesh is insanely dense. This is something you don't want to work with. This is really good if you want to do a, a tech demo or something, but not if you want to work with your files. So an A to come back to garage shading. And um, next thing my workflow was is to open this little fella right here. It's called the volume builder. And the volume builder will recalculate the geometry it finds into 10 centimeter large, small uh, polygons. And the good thing is there are quads. So what you can do, you just turn off the mesh. Here we go. And then you drop it in here. And then you can see calculating volume builder. Cinema 4D is thinking. And here we go. Now we have a mesh, you put it super fast, and what you can see here, it looks totally bad. But no worries at all. All you need to do is you have to lower the voxel size, and per se, if you go with a voxel size of, let's say, one, this should be totally fine for this mesh, because I've mentioned it before, um, the voxel size depends on the scale of your object. The bigger the scale, your object, if it's like 100 meters, then 10 centimeters would have been good, but we are here in three meters, so one centimeter is absolutely fine. And if we take a look now, now we have the voxels. This is not no geometry yet, but it's voxels. But viewport is already much, much faster. All we need to do now, take the voxel builder and uh, you can hold down the alt key while, if you, if you have the voxel builder selected and you hold down the alt key and you come and hover over that icon over here, you can use volume measure and it will automatically be the parent of the volume builder. So the cool thing is now if we NB again for garage shading in lines, you can clearly see that we have way less geometry and the scene is so much finer to work with. Um, if you're happy with what you're seeing, and I think I am totally happy with what I'm seeing because we're not losing too much of the details. So I'm fine with that. Um, Cinema 4D will help you to change that into an editable mesh by clicking make editable or hit the command shortcut number C on your keyboard. Now we can get rid of the original mesh to keep everything nice and lightweight in our scene file. And now we can start adjusting. Let me just press O to focus and everything. Here we go. And again, we're gonna adjust the axes to fit them where we need them. Now it's much faster and easier to work with. Press L, reset the Y, and O, 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 O. Everything is in focus. Very good. So this was like the first information I wanted to give to you. If you have a heavy density mesh, you can use the voxel measure or oh, what is it called voxel? Oh, voxel, the volume builder. I'm sorry. You can use the volume builder to like recalculate the geometry and what you'll be uh, ending up with is lay way less geometry. You could even go further and use the adaptive mode, but this is something for maybe for another tutorial. Um, in this case, I want to add something to my zine file. And as you may know, I'm using a Corona render and uh, let me just turn it on right quick. It's over here and call Corona. That's all we need to do. The nice thing about Corona, it has zero setup time which means you just have to turn it on and 80% of the time 
is all you need to do. Nothing, nothing ever else need to be done. Let me just get rid of the material. We don't need that. And uh, from my newest edition of uh, the content browser file, <clears throat> which is called Stranger Objects 2, with a variety of materials, with a variety of color presets, there is also something really nice called Light Studios. And for this case, we should well, we want to go with uh, the white studio right here. Let me just drag it in. Here we go. And as you can see, the studio is already set up. Uh, the studio is a little lower, but that's no problem. We can adjust this fairly easy. We just come in here and go into a side view. The curved right here, the curved part, this is our studio plane. We just drag it up until it's touching the bottom of our mesh to something like this now we have to adjust the camera it's over here and turn it on as you can see the camera is locked if you want to unlock the camera all you need to do is select the lock from the tag properties and set it to none now you can move the camera around bring everything back in focus uh, i didn't have the rotation on i'm gonna put the rotation on as well something like this i think it's cool and we're gonna relock everything because we don't want to we don't want to mess around with the camera anymore so everything is protected and we're safe to go okay as i mentioned before i've already turned on the corona render we can see if everything is working by using the interactive viewport and uh, start the viewport and here we go Corona render is ultra fast and it's already started rendering and as you can see I have a depth of field on and the depth of field is already rendering. We want to turn this off of course. Let me just stop it. In the camera settings you can turn this off if you don't want to have it. We just stop overriding, start rendering again and then we should have a scene file without depth of field. All right that looks way better than before. As you can see that the white studio setup is already functioning pretty well. We want to add some more materials. Um, back into the content browser, we can uh, select from a variety of materials. Maybe we want to go for, let's see, uh, a glass material right here. And uh, maybe we want to use, no, not a glass. Let's go for something else. Um, let me just stop this right quick recording and rendering um the macbook is already breathing very hard um let me just come in here and use something else i would like to go with um ba -bum -ba 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 -bum. we should go with the modern style and i want something like this the modern grid 61 just drag it up to the volume measure it would make sense if you just rename it we're going to call it doggos and uh, start rendering again. And as you can see that with an easy drag and drop, we have added a texture to our zine file, which already looks pretty interesting. We can further tweak this if we like um, by changing from UV projection to cubic. Make the window slightly smaller and try again. There we go. And now we have a wonderful textured scene file for Corona render. So what I usually do from there, I, I start adding stuff um, or experimenting with different materials just by simply dragging and dropping them into the viewport by choosing them from the material library. Let's see what else we got. Maybe a, a scratched orange glass that could look pretty awesome too. Let's try this see how it look and as you can see that the initial pass is rendered insanely fast and uh, we already got a nice overview of what we're doing right here now we have those as glass what else can we use maybe one of the uh, car paint this purple yellowish car paint shader that's included in the stranger objects material library and you can see that we're getting some really nice effects right here 
So thanks for watching and I hope you like what you saw. And if you did like it, please consider subscribing and leaving a thumbs up and let me know what you would like to see next in the comments. I would be very happy to see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, stay home.